It's late morning and Reef Ranger Gilbert Martinez is making his daily rounds. Martinez works for the Belize Department of Fisheries. He's one of four rangers stationed here at Glover's Reef, an 87,000 acre atoll 28 miles from the coast of Belize. Glover's is unique. It's not only one of the few true atolls in the Atlantic Ocean, it's also the site of Belize's largest no-take marine reserve, a 17,500 acre triangle where fishing is prohibited. The thinking behind that is that by protecting uh, a set amount of, of the reserve, you can then use that for those conch, the lobster to, to reproduce and then repopulate and use it as a source for the rest of the atoll to, to repopulate those species. Marine reserves are becoming one of the most important tools in ocean conservation, and Glover's is regarded by some scientists as a place with unusual promise. Glover's Reef is a very healthy ecosystem. It's got beautiful corals, it's got gorgeous structure, lots of big, healthy fish, very diverse ecosystem. I mean, I think Glover's Reef is a model of hope and it shows that, that marine reserves, even small marine reserves, can really work. Well, it's a lot colder here than it is in Belize. Ellen Pickich is a marine sciences professor at Stony Brook University. While she spends most of her time here on Long Island, at Glover's, she leads the largest shark population study in the Caribbean. Now in its 10th year, the study is yielding some surprising results. I know a lot of people were skeptical, and even I was surprised at first that a small marine reserve could make a difference in, in the longevity and the population size of a shark. But what we've learned after this 10-year period is that parks do work for sharks. They actually are effective at keeping the populations stable. This may not seem like a big deal, but at a time when many shark populations around the world are in severe decline, it's significant. Sharks are caught and killed for their fins in order to make shark fin soup, a delicacy in China, where a growing middle class means growing demand. Some estimates place the number of sharks killed at 26 to 73 million. Sharks did not fare well at the recent meeting of the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, or CITES, held in March in Doha, Qatar. A group led by China and Japan rejected a proposal that would have improved conservation efforts for two types of sharks. Which is why scientists say places like Glovers are so important. The model here, while employed elsewhere, has shown that marine reserves can be very effective. Yeah, some people may think it's obvious if you stop fishing in an area that more fish will, will be there and those fish will get bigger. And that does seem pretty obvious, but it's taken a lot of science to demonstrate that in fact that is the case. Ms. Pickich's study monitors the number of sharks living around the atoll. The group has recently experimented with a new technology to make counting sharks easier. So just in the last year, we've started using a new technique, and these are baited underwater cameras. And what we're hoping is that this, this technique can be used to look at shark abundance, relative abundance, all throughout the Belize Barrier Reef system. Yeah, that's, these are one of the markers I was talking to you about. The water is the, the marker. That separates the conservation zone from the general use zone, right? The biggest challenge in most marine reserves is enforcement. Here in Belize, that's where reef ranger Gil Martinez comes in. Martinez is on the lookout for conch and lobster poachers. In this part of the atoll, some fishing is allowed, but conch must be over three ounces to protect juveniles so they can reproduce. See, these are all big conch, right? Over three ounces, right? Conch, which can grow to five pounds, including the shell, can fetch as much as $15 a pound for the meat. But within an hour, one fisherman reveals a bounty of undersized conch. You see what I was talking about, right? That's too small. You could look at them and... <coughs> Each conch is weighed and sorted. The illegal ones put into a pile. 
24, right? Uh-huh. That's really a lot. If you catch like 25, 24, 25 undersized skunks, like every day, right? You could do a lot of damage, right? The fishermen will be let go and fined almost $600, not a paltry sum for a country like Belize, where fishermen often earn less than $4,000 a year. You know, coral reefs are pretty special. They occupy a very small part of the globe, and yet they have a huge amount of diversity contained within them. And they're under increasing threat. I think Belize is doing a really good job considering its resource base. Um, I think that they are giving marine reserves a lot more attention than many other parts of the world. And it's not perfect, but it's definitely making a big difference in the areas where these reserves exist.